interesting. I was going to ask you about the early days of the golf club. So you, Chess was on the original committee. No, Chess was never on the committee. Wasn't he? Right. No. Uh, Les Headley, his brother Bill, um, and two or three other blokes, and I've forgotten their names. So when you got down there, the course had nine holes and it was laid out. Yes. yes. That's the front nine, when you yes. look down from the course, and they had the old building there. <coughs> so it had been established, what, in early 1950s, 52 or something like 1950. that? 1950. 50. That was the first meeting in the, in the boat shed on the Anglesey River. So there were the two boat sheds near the bridge. Yep. And now, they met in one What were boat. the boat sheds for? Oh, somebody kept a boat. Someone, it was someone's shed, yeah. Yeah. I don't know who it was. Um, I can always remember swimming in any of those boat sheds yeah, yeah. as a child. Well, Mother used to have a little blow-up thing around my waist of plastic yeah, blown up. And I used to be panicking because I'd be obviously be in depth of water over a child's head. I think she was even treading water and holding me yeah, that's right. in those yeah. days off the boat shed. We have photos of those, uh, that episode. I've forgotten where the hell their the photos are, but I remember photos being taken. <coughs> the, the boat shed was the an, an original meeting place for the right. f uh, foundation committee, <coughs> and Les Headley and Bill was the, the secretary. So they agreed to to start a golf course, and they bought 50 acres from a widow who inherited it from her husband, and uh, it was all scrub. It was high, you know. Yeah, the scrub. coastal scrub. Yeah, as high as the ceiling. And um, they decided that they'd um, d subdivide some and sell the blocks. To so that would be Les Headley and those blocks would have been some of those blocks, would they? Yeah. yeah. Long Noble Street there. Yeah, and Chash was asked to, to buy a couple, which he did. And subsequently, later today, sold them at a good uh, property. And the Pam's yeah. place would have been one of those on the corner? Ah, uh, yeah. Max Pam's? Yeah, all those blocks along Noble Street were mm. part of the original 50 acres. And <coughs> Nick O'Donoghue, as you know, was a solicitor from Melbourne and had the foresight to buy up that the land to the west of the 50 acres. Mm. Where the Colstocks property house was, that area, going around from there further. Uh, where were the Colstocks? They were down the hill from us. Colstocks, was it? No, they were on, they were on um, the Russells. Well, they had one of the original golf club blocks mm -hmm. with 50 acres. Yeah, where did the Colstocks live? Did they have a house there? That was a modern house they built though. They would have had they moved there from somewhere else. It was a newer development. And I thought it was Donahue's one was further round behind the what was the was it the eighteenth hole or the ninth hole that was the long one up the hill towards it was at the far end of that would have been where his development was, wasn't it? Nick Donahue, mm -hmm. um, no, he he owned land to the west of the original fifty acres. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and draw it somehow. Um, there's Noble Street mm -hmm. and the 50 acres ran where Golf Links Road was and the Baptist Youth Camp mm -hmm. it's a Baptist Youth Camp and I think the 50 acres started there and went down to what was known as Government Road yep I remember that yeah. Government Road ran right through the course up and over the hill <coughs> and uh, Nick O'Donoghue owned that land <coughs> and all this land down to the beach down to the Great, Great Ocean Road right. and uh, he could see the value in having a golf club yeah. near a subdivision so he donated 90 acres of land to the club to do the back no, yeah, to the the well, mm. uh, yeah, to, to 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 put in more holes, and <coughs> subsequently the golf club subdivided that area. That was turned into Golf Links Road. Mm -hmm. It was donated to the government in exchange for closing that road, right. Government Road, <coughs> and. <coughs> 
this area, say, above McMahon Avenue or Belton Avenue, or whatever it was called, I think it was McMahon, that was subdivided by the golf club committee and sold off to meet the cost of developing this. There was another road in there somewhere. And that was the top road. And I've forgotten the name of the bloody road. Bob and Barbara Ellis lived on it down here. <coughs> so they, they developed the nine Bob holes. Bob and Barbara Ellis would have had the old house, you mean? Yes. Across the top there, yeah. Remember there was a garage right on the street? And you had the parties on the top, on the garage. Yes, yeah. That's what I remember. He had ice cream cakes that came with dry ice, and everyone used to drink up there. That was the drinking place on the top <coughs> of that garage, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Betty Thompson and Jimby used to get involved in all that. So what was the place next door? Was that a guest house or something? Or was it the big house next door to it? Yeah, I remember that, but I think... Was that where Jimby really used to stay there? when she came from Melbourne. Was it a guest house or a holiday house? I mean, it was right next to their place and you almost walked between the two. Yeah, I'm very vague on that. I can't recall mm -hmm. it. Um, who used to live on the top of the hill that was a surf club person that was a friend? Was that Bam oh, uh, Bams? Har no. Harris. Har uh, Harrison. Harrison. He was a plumber. Yeah. He used to live up near the builder from your place, wasn't it? He lived up... He was the one... Who used to take me brim fishing in the morning? Oh. I used to go with two or three different old men brim fishing. And they'd come and pick me up at, you know, dawn. Mm. When I was probably <coughs> 10 or 11. And we'd go with crabs. There was one of them we used to always fish with crabs. And we'd go right up the river. And if you think about it, catching crabs at the beach and taking them right up the river miles <laughs> since... Mm. And he used to always have to tear the pincers off and put the the thing into it. Um, but he used to get uh, they used to sit there with their two rod holders and and catch one or two brim. Um. Mm. I don't know who that was. Jimpy used to do a bit of fishing. I never <coughs> went fishing with Jimpy. Never went fishing with him. Um. Anyhow, that that was the original fifty acres. <coughs> And uh, they sold these boxes for twenty-five pounds. So their house box for fifty dollars. Mm. Um, now, when I joined the club in 1956, the nine holes were formed, and part of that formation was on this land that Nick O'Donoghue had given to the club. The nine ninth hole went back towards the clubhouse and ended up in the ninth green. <coughs> that land there was very low and swampy. And this land back here went back um, to about there. And we, when I was president, we squeezed in another nine holes which took in that land, but it was also always a very weak layout, mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't happy with it. And at the same time, <laughs> we were pretty short of money, so we sold 23 and a half acres of this land that Nick O'Donoghue had donated mm -hmm. to us, and it was turned into a subdivision. And he was very unhappy about that, and I had to go up to Melbourne and explain cap in hand why the club had sold land that he'd donated and I said we were desperate for money we would have folded had we not sold this mm. land and I said we're desperate to, to develop a good second nine and we haven't got it yet he said well I'll give you another area of land which was to the west as far as the forestry commission and went back into over the hill down into where Alcoa had developed their mine. Now he said, you'll find that when you look at the title, the, the um, surveyor has made a mistake <laughs> and the land goes back that far and then he said it peters out into a 12 foot 
bit of land which crosses that little road that Alcoa uses to get to its mine. He said, now if you're very smart, you'll charge Alcoa crossing uh, the for crossing that. Every time they send a truck over, they've got to pay you money. And Alcoa got very, very worried about that. And I remember the secretary... You can put a fence up and stop them. That'd be yeah. simple. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, they they got very worried about it, and the the secretary came and together with um, oh the bloke from Western Mining, I've forgotten his name, Casbog, um, and we had a discussion about it. And I said to the other uh, rest of the committee, look, you know, let's be good neighbours. We'll sell that land to Alcoa, which we did, and uh, we we hived off that portion, and. Well, we gave it to them actually. You know, we said you can have that land, providing you pay for the resurveying and you know all the legal bits and pieces, which they did, and very happily. And <coughs> then since then, Alcoa has been very, very friendly with Anglesey Golf Club mm. to the point where they used to pump water from the mine over the hill into the dam in, in the forestry area, which the club then used to water the, the fairways. Mm. Um, and as well as that, they leased that 25 acres that runs along the back of the ridge, or on the, on the back ridge, to the north of the course. You remember that mm. tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, with bracken and so forth, a lot of shit there. Uh, I reckon that would make a beautiful subdivision in the future. I mentioned that to the current president. He said, "Oh no, we're never going to sell that land. I thought it was a lot of bullshit." the ideal subdivision mm. and uh, <coughs> when the for, uh, when the SEC wanted to put electricity through to the back part of Anglesey they had to cross that land mm. and they asked for an easement and Cyril Adcock the builder very wisely said tell them to bring it 120 feet in from the back boundary <coughs> and then they can run the poles down a possible street Again, <laughs> which, which, which would save the cost of doing it later. Yeah, yeah. And so that's already done. So the, the, the golf 